To get your Aurora or Northern Lights cytometer ready to run your experiments for the day, there's a couple of tasks you'll want to complete. First, you should turn on your cytometer and wait about 30 minutes before running QC. If you haven't used the system in a while, it's a good idea to run some water through it on lower medium flow rate, maybe for 10 or 20 minutes, to flush out anything that might be sitting or could have settled while the system was off and being idle for such a long period of time over a weekend or a holiday. While you're waiting for the warm-up to finish, you can go ahead and prepare your QC beads. You'll need your bottle of QC beads and some sheath fluid or DI fluid. Use whichever media you're currently running through your system as your sheath. You should use about 300 microliters of that sheath fluid in the tube or plate if you want to record from a plate. And for the beads, you should gently mix them or vortex them quickly to resuspend any beads that could have settled out. Then go ahead and add a drop to the tube. Once you have your beads ready, go ahead and load them onto the instrument. You'll know it's fully loaded when you hear this clicking noise. When 30 minutes have passed, go ahead, log in to the QC and setup module here. And if you're stuck in plate mode like I am, you're going to want to go to preferences and toggle back to tube mode here. I prepared my beads in a tube today. Okay, now I've got my tube loaded. My start button is enabled and ready to go. If I don't have my tube loaded, if I take it off real quick, you can see the button disables, so pay attention to that. For the bead lot, you want to select the bead lot of beads that you're going to run on the system. And if you have old ones on the system like I do, it might be a good idea to go and clear those out regularly so that your other users don't get confused when they're QCing the system. And if you want to do that, go ahead and toggle over to this library section, QC beads, and you can select and click remove for any lots you want to get rid of. So let me go back to the QC and setup module. I'm going to go ahead and click start. The time to complete QC will vary depending on your configuration. The more lasers that are on your system, the longer the QC will take. So if you have a one laser system, it's going to go by really fast, less than a minute. If you have three lasers, it'll take about two minutes or so. And if you have four or five lasers, it might be closer to three minutes. What you'll see while it's running is the beads should appear on the plots. And what you're looking for visually is you want to see tight clusters in your side scatter, forward scatter plots. So here's this forward scatter, side scatter off of blue forward scatter and violet side scatter. There's another plot here with blue forward scatter, blue side scatter. They look pretty good. Then there's a histogram for every single detector on the system, and they're ordered by wavelength across the detector array. So I'm on a five laser system. My first one here is the UV laser. And going from top to bottom, they're organized again by wavelength of the laser. So I've got UV up top, then violet, blue. If I scroll down, I can see yellow, green, and red. And what you want to see here are these nice tight peaks, right? There's a few that'll be a little broader where there aren't a lot of photons getting in, like UV one's always a little broader. And also some of the, the late red channels will be a little broader, like UV 16 over here. Now as it's going through, you saw the shift of the peaks a little while ago. The algorithm's trying to optimize the laser delay for every one of the lasers on board the system. Once it's found a good optimal location for that, it's going to go ahead and start recording data, and it'll record 10,000 events of these beads. Once all of those events have been recorded, the software is going to go ahead and compute the results, and we'll take a look at that report as soon as it's finished. Okay, when QC is done, a pop-up window will appear. If it failed, you'll get a different message than this one, and it'll try to give you clues on how to recover for what the possible failures could have been. This one we passed successfully, so I can click here to view the report. When I go to the reports page, I can see a list of all the QCs that have been run and by what user they were run by. I'm currently pointed to the one I just completed, and then all of the data for that run is shown down below. So I can see here I've got a table for each laser and then the detector that we're looking at for those different lasers. It's going to try to set the beads to the same MFI every day. 
and that might require slight gain changes from day to day to get that same MFI. And those changes that you can see here are compared against the last SciTech service report, SciTech service QC that was run. Then we can see the MFIs that we're trying to achieve for each channel based on the beadlot file you selected. The last metric here is the RCV, or the spread of each of those peaks that you were looking at for every single detector. And you can scroll down here if you want to preview all of the different detectors and their results. Anything that failed will get a red X in the status icon. When everything passes, they get these green check marks. A little further down below, you'll see this laser settings box. And that's where you can see what the laser delay was set for every laser. Blue is the reference laser, so it will always be zero. It'll show you the area scaling factor that the system determined for the QC bead, as well as the forward scatter area scaling factor. Now, the pass-fail criteria for the QC are shown at the bottom of the page in the specification section. You can see we've got an RCV spec for our scatter channels, for one channel on each of the laser lines, and then a percent gain change from day to day. Why we chose these? If we see the RCV start to get really broad, that suggests that your alignment is shifting and drifting and needs to be fine-tuned. Otherwise, that'll impact your, your unmixed data. You'll start getting broader cell populations, and it'll be harder to distinguish what you can distinguish when things are aligned nicely. For the gain change, several things could be going on. It could be alignment-related. It could be that your laser power is changing, or maybe just there's a bubble in your flow cell that's shifted your core stream a little off axis, so has to crank up the gains to get the same MFIs. And that is how you get set up and going, and next you're ready to go into acquisition and set up your experiments for the day.